Uh, kia ora te whanau, uh, no mua hara mai, welcome back to another response for um, Māori 570 um, paper Te Whare Wānanga Waikots. I'm just going through the readings and doing responses, so um, we're still on with week 5, we're carrying on with week 5 and we're looking at a reading in the Kaupaparanga Hau. A reading, it's, it's, this is a puka puka with a collection of readings from the Kaupaparanga Hau workshop. Um, we're looking in particular at Jenny Lee's um, Decolonising Māori Narratives Pūdāko as Methods So it was pretty, really interesting um, Especially just reflecting back onto my own research um, It's coming from a Māori uh, perspective So start off, she talks about what a pūdāko is um, come here from page 97, the first page of her writing. Uh, Pūrāko is a term not usually associated with academic writing or research methodology. Rather, Pūrāko is most commonly used to refer to Māori myths and legends. Pūrāko, however, should not be re uh, rele relegated to the, the category of fiction and fable on the, of the past. Pūrāko, in traditional form of Māori narrative, contains philosophical thoughts, epistemological constructs, cultural codes, and worldviews that are fundamental to our identity as Māori. So she talks about Pūrāko. So Pūrāko is pretty much uh, um, stories, stories and tales. Uh, it's sort of like the English translation. Uh, but they're most referred to as um, myths and legends, which means they're not true. Uh, it's coming back to um, ontologies and epistemologies, talking about uh, what's real and what's not real. Um, and in that perspective, or coming from that perspective, Pudako, myths and legends are in term not real, but in Te Ao Māori, they're definitely real. Uh, the, she talks on further about they're coming from the kōrero ati atua, which is like stories from the atua. Um, and in that these, and from a Māori perspective, um, Pudako are very real. Um, she goes on to talk about um, storytelling and how important it is um, to s sustain um, knowledge and to remember knowledge. So storytelling, she goes on here through the same page, storytelling has been a, uh, one of the key ways knowledge and sustained and protected within indigenous communities. Reclaiming storytelling and retelling our traditional stories is to engage in one form of decolonization. Um, so she talks about... Um, how storytelling in Pūrāko has been used to um, keep knowledge flowing throughout um, and that we can tell stories to um, tell our tamariki and pass on through the generations the stories of what happened on the land. Um, so Linda Smith sort of talks about this um, in her write-up and talking about, um, well, I'm just going to relate it, talking about um, the loss of Pūrāko. So say if like a town name got changed, um, say we're talking about... Um, Tekwiti, Tekwiti Tanga o Nga Whakaro, the full name for Tekwiti, and you're reading this waiata, these tauparapan is talking about Tekwiti Tanga o Nga Whakaro, um, you get, there's no actual um, mana to that Pūrāko, it sort of loses its mana because we're not calling it Tekwiti Tanga o Nga Whakaro, we're just calling it Tekwiti, and you're thinking to yourself, is this actually Tekwiti or is this another place? So even just the changes of names can sort of alter um, Pūrāko and sort of make them um, now void and sort of useless in a way. Um, so further on, page 97, she talks about um, Pūrāko and how we are representing Pūrāko and how we took Pūrāko or Māori people take Pūrāko and change it. So she talks about um, here, page 97, Māori also engaged the technology of written literacy to record Pūrāko and we were unafraid to adapt Pūrāko to fit their occasion or purpose. Um, so talking about how Pūrāko, you know, isn't just a story told thing and that when all this new technology came um, that we actually started using books, writing it down, writing wire down, um, and coming to today, uh, Te Ao Huri Huri, the contemporary world, um, talking about uh, Pūrāko getting made into films, or like um, my kaupapa that I was going to do, I'll talk about my kaupapa change at the end of this video, um, talking about film and how we can use it to tell, tell stories um, and sort of educate our rangatahi um, through film, for telling Pūrāko, telling our stories, because we're all 
storytellers. Uh, she talks about this further on in the uh, reading as well. Uh, so she comes up um, talking about uh, Miratamita, the late Miratamita. Uh, Maori filmmaker Miratamita and, her others, and others have used video imaging to continue telling our stories. According to Mita, visual media offers a more fluid movement between time and space and in the confines of literacy or literally structures on the page, intent on preserving our history as well as producing Purako that explore our contemporary culture. Mita reinforces the purpose of Purako as, she ex as an exploration and exposition of culture and identity. Uh, so, um, Jenny Lee talks about uh, Mita to Mita and how she's not afraid um, to adapt uh, Purako into today's world and sort of um, explore our culture and put down our culture through film. Um, so, coming on to my new kaupapa for my thesis, I've been thinking long and hard about what, what the question needs to be answered, so I think I'm going to move away from um, film, uh, indigenous film, and move towards uh, gender roles on the marae, uh, in particular in Ngāti Maniapoto. So, um... She talks about this here, um, talking about oh, like, um, Purako and how um, they've sort of been changed over the years due to um, uh, like European um, researchers. They've sort of they've talked here, Elton Best, um, Reed, talking about how they changed Purako. Oh, I've got it here. The tempering with tribal migration Purako to present a tidy sin. Synthesis became the basis of the Māori myths and legends taught at schools for decades, and as Bishop and Glenn note, continues to be used by some teachers and politicians and educationalists today. So it's talking about how um, researchers used to take Purako and from Kitena Iwi, Kitena Iwi, from different Iwi perspectives, they're all slightly different. So they've done research on all these Iwi, they're all slightly different, and then they've just altered them to put them all all together to make one sort of one story that flows with every with everybody so Pākehā people can read it and go, okay, I sort of know, I sort of know about everybody, but I don't know in particular. And so those alterations of Pūdāko have um, uh, allowed um, a lot of our stuff to be lost because um, people, as it was just read, it was being used in schools, taught at schools, so it was taught to our tamariki, um, all the stuff that wasn't actually quite true. Um... Yeah, so a lot of our stuff about our wahine and I think um, gender roles has sort of been lost or have sort of been taken from us, um, from these um, European um, researchers and they've been changed. Um, so I really want to look into that if, um, you know, our roles on the marae, karanga, our whai kōrero on the pai pai, if those are actually tikanga and kawa that we've come up with, that we've always had, or if it's something that's sort of come in um, when we've been colonised and now we take that as tikanga because we, you know, we don't have history, we don't have recordings of stuff before that. So she highlights it sort of here, uh, Ruahine, uh, mythic woman, by Ngahuia uh, Te Awe Kōtuku, is a Māori writer re represent, representing traditional pūdāko in a new form, Te Awe uh, Te Awe Kōtuku tells her own version of some well-known Purako that feature powerful women. These Purako are a significant departure uh, from most other written Purako that either provide direct translations of Māori Purako. They are rich in detail, subtle in their teaching, yet uh, for right and un unabashed, her versions of events reaffirms the power, strength and positions of Māori women in traditional Māori society. Um, so she's talking about, um, well, she highlights that some of these Purako actually do hold um, Māori wahine and they're actually they're quite powerful. Um, I just went to a talk the other day at the uni part of the Mana Wahine series and they talked about um, uh, Hini Aiwiwa and uh, she's, a, she's the goddess for giving birth and talked about how much power and mana she has and that a lot of these um, uh, Atua Wahine or these um, Māori gods who are women um, are actually not recorded in a lot of things, or if they are recorded, they're not given names um, because of um, yaiki, uh, European researchers, like according to uh, European researchers, um, wahine weren't actually that important. It was all about the men. 
So a lot of our wahine have been lost. Um, so coming into my new kopapa, I want to be looking at a money portal. So I've come into contact with this book, uh, Rediahu Chronicles. Uh, it's, it's a Pudaku book from Ngati Money so it's the perfect thing for me to be reading. It's from um, Shane Tiroki and Philip Crown. Um, so it has just um, Pudako in here um, from Money Apoto, or, or more particularly now, um, Ngati Ririahu. Um, so one of the stories in here talks about um, all of the maunga that are named around Money Apoto, um from Kahu. Uh, I'll just give you a quick overlook of this book beautiful book and i think coming up into our um blog assignment i think i'm gonna i'm leaning towards talking about shane siroki and using some of these pudako and how they can help recover some uh matauranga so it's got on here kahu's recovery talks about kahu and how she traveled from maunga to maunga uh she named maunga like um uh, Puriora, um, Kakepoku, so Maunga like that, and how uh, Wahine um, actually have a really important role uh, in Te Ao Māori. So that's, um, uh, yeah, I better not get into much of my blog assignment just yet. Um, still need to discuss uh, with Dr. Hayley Cavino uh, which path I want to take. Um, I either want to look at Miratamita or look into uh, Shane Tiroki, uh, looking into detail uh, about Ngāti Maniapoto, looking at some of these pūrāko and how they sort of described um, how he was back in the day in terms of um, gender roles. Um, yeah, so that was um, Pūrāko is method, my little response to that. Beautiful uh, corridor. This whole um, actually, this whole puka puka is a beautiful corridor. Um, and oh, there's so much more I could have talked about. Hopefully, I didn't ramble on too long. Just looking at the timer now, but um, yeah, that's week five done and dusted. So just heading into week six next week, and then heading into our blog assignment. So yeah, kia ora.